Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on when you're actually watching this. My name is Ian Middleton, I'm a travel and landscape photographer, and you can find out more about me on my website ianmiddletonphotography.com or check out my Instagram or Facebook pages at Ian Middleton Photography. Now, this is one of my quick photography tips, and what I'm going to show you here is the one of the advantages to uh, using a technique we call exposing to the right. Now exposing to the right is in a sense overexposing your image. Now there's a reason for this, okay? In many cases you've probably been taught never to over or underexpose your images. But with digital this is a tested technique and there is actually a good reason behind it. Now, first of all, I'm going to say uh, one of the main reasons behind it is with a digital image, most of the detail in your image is over here on the right. And if you push your histogram to the right, you get much more detail and much smoother color transition. So you get a much smoother, vibrant image. But that doesn't happen straight away because of course as you can see uh, this image is opened in Adobe Camera Raw and of course it looks overexposed, washed out and nasty. So we need to do some work on it first. It's not just a case of taking it straight out of camera. Um, so this image here is an image of Lake Bled. It was taken uh, just around about sunset after a, a, night, a day of rain and so there were some beautiful clouds, beautiful colors and everything in the scene. Now this image here was exposed correctly. So you can see that in this image I've captured all of the detail in the sky, the soft colors, uh, the reflections and everything. But this middle bit here is is dark. In this image where I've overexposed it, I've brought out all of the detail here in the middle. Uh, on the island, the, the colors are on the trees are much more vibrant. You can see the difference. We got more of the, the mist sh uh, from the lake showing in the middle. So really, I, I've brought out a lot more detail. But of course, the sky is washed out. There, we cannot see the detail in the clouds or anything so much and uh, of course the reflection on the water is also a little bit too bright so that's why we need to do some work. Now what's important when you use this technique is not to push your exposure too far so you mustn't overexpose it too much. If you do then you lose all the detail so you can see here that I've exposed the image and pushed it as far right as possible but I haven't pushed it off the edge of the histogram and that means that although it may not look like it all of the detail is still there and one way to check that first of all you can already see in the corner it's it's not pushed off the edge usually when your image is overexposed if I pull this up like this for example when the image is too much overexposed and all the detail is burned out you get this this little triangle uh, lights up here with this and um, you can see that that's the highlight clipping warning you could also see that the histogram is pushed off the edge so that clearly is an indication that your image is pushed too far and that the detail is lost it's burned out another way to check that is to hold down the alt key click on your white button you can also see the areas where your sky is burned out where the detail is lost so actually even pushing it that far it's still not that much uh, we can go even further pushing the whites up the more we push it even further there you can see like if we push that right to the edge you just can see that you've got total burnout everything's burned out there's that means that there is no detail in these areas but we're going to pull that back. I'm also going to pull the exposure back, back to zero. We can do the same here for the shadow areas. The left side is your shadow area. And now we can see we've got a big gap. So that means that in this part of the histogram, there is no detail. That means there are no dark shadows as such. Um, 
Another way we can also check that is to hold down our Alt key, click the black button, you'll see everything is completely white. If we pull the shadows, if we pull those blacks right down, the colored areas are now indicating uh, loss of shadow detail. That means that these areas here are just completely black, there's no detail at all, which you can see if we let go. So I'll pull that back to zero. Okay, so we go back to where we are at the beginning. Now, as I said, this doesn't look very nice, so we need to do some work on it. So we know that we've got all the detail there, we haven't lost anything. So the first thing I'm going to do is because of this gap here, yeah, I'm going to pull the black slider down as far as we can go. Again, you can hold down the Alt key to see that you don't push it too far. Now we've got the clip highlight, the shadow clipping warning up there coming up. So you want to take it. I typically like to take it to about here. You may have to readjust this a bit later after some other adjustments. But for now, I'm going to take it to there. Okay. So now you can see the difference. Now we've brought a bit more contrast into this uh, middle area here. Okay. Now for the sky, again, all the detail is there. It's just a bit too bright. So when we want to work on just the sky alone, I can use this tool here. It's called the graduated filter tool. So I'm going to click on this and it's going to open this, this uh, area here. So this, if you've ever used neutral density graduated filters on your camera, this tool simulates that. So what we do, again, we can hold down the shift key here. If we hold down the shift key and click and pull this down, okay, this uh, simulates our neutral density graduated filter. This area here is the graduation part. Anything above it is uh, completely makes a complete change and from here it graduates from the change to normal so we can adjust how big a graduation we want to use we can use a very hard graduation and i'll give you an example of that if i if i pull the exposure right down to something like this here you can see the graduation is extremely hard so we can change that so we can make a make a medium graduation okay now I don't want to pull that back that's too dark so uh, now we can adjust our exposure so now we can darken the top half of the image now you can pull it down to what you like you can make it uh, minus two stops darker minus one uh, minus one and a quarter or, or one and a half whichever you want to do I'm going to take it to about minus one and a half so I'm going to reduce the exposure in this area from minus 1.5 of a stop that's brought back all the nice detail here we can do the same that's another advantage to this tool on the bottom we can do two so again I can add the tool here. Now you'll see that this is much darker even though it's the same amount of exposure reduction. And the reason for that is that water reflections are always darker than the sky. The sky is always much brighter. So I don't need to reduce it that much. I can take this one to about half a stop. Okay. Okay, so that's done. Now I can click back here. Now, see the difference already? Uh, if we see the difference between the two that's before that's after yeah but compare that to the image that was correctly exposed yeah look all that middle is so much darker but in this one we've really brought out the color the vibrancy and the detail of the area around the church and the hills and the colors of the greens are, are much richer much more vibrant so it's a much better technique. So once we've made these adjustments again we can go back to this area here and continue to make some more adjustments. We can tweak the contrast up a bit, uh, add a touch of vibrance. I'd always use this tool sparingly. I tend to take it maybe plus five plus ten but never too much. I don't like to overdo these things. 
personally. Okay, so now we can then open it into Photoshop. I usually then open it into Photoshop and make a few other little adjustments in Photoshop too, just to finish it off. You can also do the same in Lightroom, of course, if you're using that. There we go. So then, typically what I do again, I like to use the Shadows and Highlights tool in Photoshop because you get much more control. If you always check this Show More Options, then you can adjust the radiuses here. So I like to use the Highlight tool, yeah, because the Highlight tool really brings out the detail in the clouds. When you've got great cloud effects like this, the highlight tool really brings out the detail. And I always push my radius up to around here. So you can see the difference. Yeah, it's really brought out the detail in that sky. So I'll OK that. And I like to use my curves tool to add a bit of uh, overall contrast. This tool is gives you much finer control than the, the, the standard con contrast control, which is a bit harsh. So we pull this bottom corner down to darken and this top corner up to brighten. And this boosts overall contrast. Now, you could do it to taste, of course. It's totally up to you how you want your image to look, but I tend to just tweak it a bit. Okay, and there we have it. Now the picture looks much brighter, much more vibrant uh, and colorful than the image that was correctly exposed. So there's your advantage to exposing to the right. Okay, I hope you found this useful. Check out my other tutorials and stay tuned for the next one. Thanks a lot.